You need a password manager, and I totally get it. I know it sounds intimidating, but in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your password manager. This video is sponsored by 1Password, and I'll be showing you how to get started with 1Password as well as Bitwarden. Bitwarden is my preferred free password manager. It's got everything you need to secure your accounts, but the UI is a bit cluttered. If you don't mind spending a few bucks a month, I would highly recommend 1Password. It's got some extra features that I think are worth having, plus the UI is way more approachable for beginners. I've got a whole video comparing different password managers, but in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to get started with 1Password and Bitwarden. You'll start by going to the 1Password site or the Bitwarden site and click Get Started. With 1Password, you're gonna to have to choose a plan. The individual plan is gonna be the best fit for most people. And then with Bitwarden, you can create an account for free. Now we're at the point where it's time to create a master password, and this is the first point of friction for most people when getting started with the password manager. Your master password is going to protect all of your logins, so it needs to be secure. It's not sufficient to do password123 or some sort of insecure password that someone could easily guess, but at the same time, I think a lot of users feel this pressure of needing to randomly generate some super complicated password and try to remember it. So we need to find a balance here, because because it's not a good idea to put your master password in a notes file on your phone. So what's the compromise? Well, for me, I like to use a passphrase. This is basically a series of words with spaces in between, and this is actually more secure than the average randomly generated password that's got symbols and numbers and stuff that makes it hard to remember. With a passphrase, you could have four words like garlic, sink, fuse, and tuxedo, and have spaces between them. You could have capital letters at the beginning of each word, or one word could be all uppercase. You could even choose to add numbers and symbols into your passphrase, but you don't need to in order for it to be secure. I like to just have four words with spaces, maybe do some uppercase letters and leave it at that, and I find it's so much easier to remember than some sort of randomly generated password. Now that I have my master password picked out, I'm just going to put it into Bitwarden here. You can choose to add a hint. I'm not going to because I really take account security seriously, so I don't wanna give anybody any hints. I'll click create account, and then on the 1Password side, I will click create account as well. It looks like Bitwarden wants us to complete a little challenge here. Is that a bike? I, they gotta make these things easier for humans. Oh great, we passed. Create account, wonderful, and uh, no thank you, I don't want my web browser to save that information. Uh, let me go get the code so we can continue with 1Password. Once you get that code pasted in, now 1Password is going to let you enter your master password. I will click next. And then we have the option of entering a card number, but the thing I like about 1Password is they don't require a card number to get started with the free trial. So I'll just click create account and add card later. So this is one of the things I like about 1Password. They have something called an emergency kit, and it's a PDF file that you can download, you can print it out, you can keep it in a secure place like a safe. You could also upload it to a cloud storage app, but just make sure that the cloud storage is secure and trusted because this is a sensitive document you don't want someone else getting access to. But when I download this PDF, you're gonna see that there's actually something in it called a secret key. And that's one of the ways that 1Password protects your account is they have this concept of a secret key that is used in combination with your master password. And what that means is if a hacker ever got access to the 1Password servers and they got access to your vault file, they can't open it with just your master password. They also need the secret key in order to get in. So it's kind of like a second password that 1Password generates for you. I like the idea. I think you can never have enough security. So make sure you download this emergency kit and you keep it in a safe place. Now for the Bitwarden side of things, they do have something called emergency contacts, and that's going to allow someone you designate to have access to your account in the event of an emergency. But unfortunately, this is only available in the paid version of Bitwarden, which is $10 a year. Once you're into your vault, you 
can add new login items. Now, the browser extension can actually do this automatically as you use websites. So when you go to a new website that's not in your vault yet and you sign in, the browser extension will give you a little pop-up saying, would you like to add this to your vault? And you can save it. So that's a good way to add passwords to your vault when you're new to a password manager. But if you did want to add something manually, it's really simple to do. In both 1Password and Bitwarden, you just look for the plus button. And in 1Password, I will create a login. And in Bitwarden, a login is pre-selected. So you're going to give it a name. I'll just say Facebook. Same thing in 1Password, give it a title. And then obviously enter your username. Now, if your username is your email address, if that's what you use to log into a website, you just put your email in the username field. Don't let it confuse you. You can definitely enter your email as your username. Now at this point, you may be tempted to just save it and move on to the next one, but there's one more step. We need to enter the website address into the website field. And the reason this is important is because the browser extension also has an autofill option. So when you visit these websites, it can automatically put the login details in when you go to sign in. And that's one less thing that you have to copy and paste. But the only way it knows how to do autofill is by comparing the website URL you enter to the website that that you're currently in in your browser so i'm just going to put the facebook address right here and in bitwarden it's just under where it says uri1 and also if there's multiple addresses for a website like if this is a microsoft account and they've got a bunch of different domains you can log into you can just say new uri in bitwarden or in one password it's got another website field here for an additional url and one thing i want to point out is that this url does not have to be the exact url of the login page so don't stress about getting like facebook.com slash login or anything like that. As long as you have the main domain of the website, in this case, facebook.com, that's all you need for autofill to work properly. Now that your vault is set up, it's a good idea to take some time to download the browser extension, desktop app, and mobile apps for your password manager of choice. Both password managers have a download page where you can access links to everything. I'm just gonna get started with the web browser. So I will install the Brave extension, right here because that's my browser of choice i'll click add to brave and then looks like it is set up so i'm just going to pin this to brave and when i click it for the first time it's going to open the one password desktop app which i have already downloaded you'll need to take some time to download the desktop app as well and i'm just going to go ahead and sign in with my one password account the 1Password extension is installed and now it's ready to do autofill on different websites. And the Bitwarden extension follows a similar process. I will just install it and add it to Brave. And once it's installed, it's actually going to let us sign in to Bitwarden without the need for the desktop app. So it's totally up to you if you decide to get the desktop app or not. The mobile apps take a couple extra steps to set up. On iOS, go to settings, passwords, password options, make sure that autofill passwords is enabled, and then make sure that 1Password or Bitwarden is checked under allow filling from. On Android, it's a similar process and I'll have some articles with instructions linked below. When you have all the apps downloaded and set up, now you can start digging into some of the other features of 1Password and Bitwarden. I like to explore other login types. In 1Password, if I click new item, there's so many different login types you can do. Secure note, credit, card, bank account, database, passport, a lot of things that you may not have thought of storing in your password manager, but I actually really like storing credit card numbers in a password manager because then when you're on a website and you need to put in your card information, one, it can autofill it, and two, you can select from all your different cards without having to dig through your wallet and find the one you're looking for. So I definitely recommend checking that out also useful to do for a passport. Sometimes you have to put in your passport information on a website when you're getting ready to travel. Why go to the cabinet and pull your passport out when you can have it in your password manager? Bitwarden has these login types as well. There's not quite as many, they just have login, card, identity, and secure note, but the concept is still the same. 
Another thing you can do to supercharge your password manager is take advantage of custom fields. This is something that both 1Password and Bitwarden can do, and this allows you to create any field you want when you have to save some sort of information related to your account that may not be just the username and password. For example, on some airline websites, they actually require your last name in order to log in. And what I found is that with 1Password, I can just create a field that says last name and put in my last name. And then if I save that, yes, it's a custom field that you can copy, but I'm not gonna copy my last name. What I found is that it can actually autofill it into the airline website on the login screen and be smart enough to know this goes in this field. So that way I can truly log in with one click and not have to type my last name even though my username and password autofilled. And that's the same thing with Bitwarden. You can create custom fields. I am not totally sure if autofill works with Bitwarden custom fields as 1Password is my personal password manager that I use every day, but same concept applies as far as creating a custom field. You can save it and then you can easily copy that custom field. So some use cases for this may be if you have your bank account login in the form of a login, you have your bank website and your username and password for online banking, you can create a custom field for your account number and routing number rather than having a separate bank account item just for those details. 1Password also has a feature that can keep track of when you use the sign in with feature on a website. If you choose to sign in with Google, Google or sign in with Facebook when you create an account on a website, instead of using an email and password, 1Password can keep track of this and remind you when you go back to that website and say, hey, you use sign in with Facebook on this website. So that way you're not wondering why there's not a login with the username and password in your password manager. When you're comfortable with the basics of your password manager, consider hardening your account with two-factor authentication. With 1Password, make sure you have your emergency kit stored in a secure location. This is something that you could give to a trusted family member or friend so that if something ever were to happen, your family member or friend can get access to your vault. They would not be able to do this without the secret key, which is on that emergency kit document. And with Bitwarden, you might consider setting up access to emergency contacts, though this is going to require you to upgrade to the paid version. And at that point, you might consider using 1Password instead. For two-factor authentication, there are multiple options. You could use an authenticator app like Authy, or you can use a physical security key like this USB key on my key ring, and that's going to require you to physically plug this into your device or tap it to your phone via NFC to gain access to your vault. Since you're only as strong as your weakest link, I think it's a great idea to have a physical hardware security key that is required to get into your password manager. That way, if someone were to get into your phone, they can't open your authenticator app and have the code they would need to gain access to your vault. Now, similar to emergency contacts, using a physical security key with Bitwarden is going to require the premium version. So once again, at that point, I would recommend considering just upgrading to 1Password. I have a video on security keys that you can check out, but I use YubiKey security keys. This one is USB-C, so it works with all my Macs, and it also has NFC, so I can just tap it to the back of my iPhone and get into my password manager from anywhere.